on the painting table today we're on blood bowl and i'm showing you how i did my human imperial noble team stage one is some head swaps cutting some feathers off some helmets putting chest eagles on one model and not the other doing a few conversions bit strange because the orcs and goblins come with alternate parts the humans don't you end up with duplicate casts so i do think it's worth spending a few extra minutes building them uh, to make them look different to each other so that you're not you know in a team full of twins after that black spray and then i've put a retributor armor over the top so i'm going for a gold armor effect at the end any colors i use will be in the description down below so you can get an exact match if you want to because i do use different companies paints um or you can just use this as inspiration if you want to use your own now i'm going for a purple and bone colored um, clothing and i would always start with the dark color first what i'm doing here whether that's going to go on the top cloth or whether it's going to go into the slits and the recesses i'd always do dark first because if you make a mistake it's easier to cover over the dark with the light than it is vice versa and i would always keep your paint water down i always use a wet palette nowadays um, unless i'm doing dry brushing and things that keeps your paint watered for you but if you use a normal palette put a bit of uh, water in there to keep it thinner because it's much better to do two thin coats than one thick coat because you won't block up the detail and also if you do make a mistake it's a lot easier to fix um, you know a thin coat than it is to fix a, a thick coat now on these models there's loads of good detail in these uh, but you will need to you know turn your model upside down turn it to a side or whatever to get into the the slashes and cuts on these models use a nice thin brush so you can get in there without making too many errors but if you do miss bits in the recesses and in the join between uh, two color areas don't worry so much because we're going to do a wash layer later that will cover some of that what you want to make sure you're doing is covering the flat areas and what will eventually be the, the, the highlight areas because if you miss those on a metallic undercoat it really shows and doesn't look very good um, beauty of metallic undercoats it makes your highlights pop out a bit more um, but if you miss your highlight areas you could see that metallic showing through and obviously it looks worse than if you just had a black undercoat but strengths and weaknesses of metallic undercoat so i'm also doing uh, the cloth but i'm doing the like metallic feathers on his knee and i'm doing the feathers on the rest of the models and just picking out like the uh, the chest um scrolls as well so those two models there you can see that's actually the same model but because i've done a different head on one than the other and i've done the top layer of cloth on one purple the top layer of cloth on the other bone those two models now look very different so here we are we're back onto griff again what i'm going to work on now is the leather color now you could use any color leather you want i've gone for a, a red leather because i think that reflects more what nobility would wear if you watch you know films with renaissance soldiers and things in from that day afterwards the nobility quite often used the brown leather probably because it's expensive and showy um which is honestly why they would do it but i think particularly for modeling it's expensive and showy but also it contrasts better uh, so if you look on the armor here on these models where you know the stomach armor and they've got sort of bigger gloves and boots it provides a better contrast to the rest of the model than just doing black wood and that's what you've got to think as well don't necessarily think about oh black's easier to paint or whatever try and think about the how it's going to contrast with the rest of the model i think doing black gloves and black armor it just wouldn't contrast well with the, the burnished gold in my opinion now the flesh on griff there took about 20 seconds just his face but you can see there with the bodyguard models there's quite a lot of flesh showing around the belly area and as whatever so again a couple of thin coats if you need get some really good coverage uh, on those models now we're working on the detail that differs between models because not every model is carrying a ball not every model's got an eagle on its shoulder now i'm going to use a flat brown for the eagle shortly but what i've done for the ball which three models are carrying is taking a bit of that flat brown mixed in a little bit of the leather color just to make a slightly different um, brown color to do the leather with now you might want to do that or you might just want to pop open a different brown that's entirely up to yourself what i have done though is a stitching on the ball i've done with the leather color we've used for the gloves so just some variants now what i wouldn't do is use the same brown on everything on the model that's brown because then you end up with a brown bird brown gloves brown whatever so useful to do different colors so we've uh, done the base coats now what i have done has gone through i'm showing you there is i've gone through with a bit of black and a bit of the brown we mixed for the um, ball and the brown we've used for the eagle and i've stuck that onto mustaches or hair or whatever just so there's a few different tone browns nothing wrong with having a mustache the same color as the eagle um, because it's on different models that's just how i've done it 
Now what we're doing is a wash layer. Now this is that Vallejo wash. I've used this if you've watched my orc video. It's the same wash. Now what I'm doing on the humans though is being very careful not to put it on as thick. When you're putting a wash layer on, if you put the wash on really, really thick, obviously it will dirty up the model more. Now that's great for orcs. I want to put a wash onto the humans because it contrasts nicely. It gives you different tones and it almost provides some highlights for you. But I don't want it as thick as I did with the orcs because that starts a dirty effect. So if you put too much on, it's going too thick for you. Like you've seen there, bit of tissue paper, dry your brush off and wick that wash back off the model and it will go on thin. So you can see here that I've now washed all the models and it's now had time to dry. You can almost see that they've got two or three tones on every single area now already. So, um, you know, onto the armor, it almost looks like it's two or three colors on there. The same thing with the clothing, whatever. And you could stop at this stage if you wanted to and it'd be perfectly usable and perfectly fine. What I would always do at this stage though myself, um, it makes it sort of pop out more is take all the colors you've already used so we're not talking about anything different we're talking about the purples we've used uh, you know the, the brown the leather color and go back over uh, every area of the model you're not doing a full coverage though what you're covering is probably half to three quarters maximum of what you've covered you want to leave the recess area untouched and then a small segment from where that recess is uh, untouched as well so you get that gradation from the really dark recess area where the wash will have really pulled a little bit further out from the recess area you'll see the wash will start to not cover as much and then when you get to the flat area you'll see actually the wash quite often goes a little patchy so actually what you're trying to cover is that kind of patchy area so you'll get dark recess slightly lighter coming out of the recess and then the flat areas that might look a bit patchy you're then putting the paint down there that will give you a three-tone effect on your model which I've then done, you can see on the palette there, I've gone through every color I've previously used. Now actually with the feathers here, what I did is that same effect, you know, covering just, a, it's more of a highlight um, on all the feathers, a little bit of a dry brush, whatever, just to that. And actually I was going to put some washes and some bright colors on the feathers. And I really liked how it looked at this stage and went, no, I'm not. <laughs> so, you know, time saver, it wasn't meant to be a time saver. I just really liked it and thought I'm gonna stop. So you might find that in a model, you might have a plan for your model, change your mind completely. Now I'm going to go back and do some extra details. Now I was going to do the armor on every model first, but I um, decided to do the, the eagle here. So the eagle's already had his second brown layer. Um, what I've done there though is I've mixed the flat brown that I painted the eagle with, and I've put some of the lighter brown in there to give me a third tone. So I think it's a quite a feature part of the model, and I'm just picking out certain areas on these feathers to put what will be, or what will look like on the model, a fourth color uh, on there just on the tips of the wings or whatever. Now, just showing you um, a couple of models because we're at a stage where we could be finished. Um, you look at the armor there, we've got some different tones. You look at the, the cloth we've gone back over, we've got different tones of the model. We could finish here, but I do want to do something extra with the armor. I actually think it looks fine um, just with that wash layer on. And you can see on Griff there, you can see two or three tones, but what you can also see is on the real flat area, especially on his left kind of thigh armor there, where the flat area, you'll see the, the, the wash looks a little patchy. Now, nothing wrong with that. We are going to correct that in a second on all the models. But what I'm going to do on Griff before we do that is a final highlight layer. Again, not needed. Um, the eagle didn't need it, but it's just a fourth color over the top. And I'm using a Gene Steeler purple color because it was the next color up from uh, the purple I'd used. So I'm using workshop color on top of a layer. That's fine. You'll, you know, you get to know what paints you like. Um, just to make Griff pop a little more. Now I haven't done this on any of the purple on any of the models because I really don't think it needed it, but Griff is you know, like a star character, star player. He's the one that everyone's gonna pick up. And it's always nicer to put a little bit more effort into your characters. Um, you could go to town and spend hour upon hour on Griff. For me, this is a gaming model. That's not what I'm after. So we've done a little extra detail on purple. Now it's that little bit extra detail on the armor. So you see there, I've literally drawn the line down the middle of that armor panel. And then I'm just working my way out to the edge. Then I'm taking the lighter gold color that I'm using and just putting that on the highlight layer. Then I'm going back to that Retributor Armor color uh, to the edge. So I have two colors over the top there, the Retributor Armor that matches the spray paint and then an old gold color from uh, Vallejo, which is different. So again, two companies uh, models on there. So I am gonna do this gold uh, armor effect on all the models. What I'm not doing is the extras you've seen on the, on the Eagle and things. But that works through the armor there. That's every stage done. You can see all the different tones and highlights through the team there. And I'm really happy with what I've done there. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed it. And hopefully I'll see you again.